Everybody, I'm Gloria Copeland, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Pastor George Pearsons is with us again, and he is talking to us about how to reap our harvest, which I'm always interested in, Pastor. That's right. So welcome. That's right. Thank you, Gloria. What a thrill it is to be here oh, with I you love and to share you. the Word of God with you and our friends and partners. And you know, these outlines that we've been teaching from, this is actually day 140. Four, I wow. believe, of Isn't all of that our awesome? all of our prosperity teachings we've done together since 2010. You've done them. We've had job. 350 over 350 thousand downloads of these outlines, Think so people that. are interested. And if you're just starting to listen to these teachings on prosperity, all all of the teachings, the videos, the outlines, they're all available to you on kcm.org. These. Uh, outlines that we're teaching from today. You can get those if you just go to the home page, look for the picture of Glory and Me, click onto it, and it'll take you over there to where the outlines are. And we are, Gloria, we're talking about how to reap your harvest. You know what I'd really enjoy is hearing testimonies ah. of people that have put that word yes. to work and reaped a harvest during you, the time we've been You've been teaching on it. You you want some victory over lack I like letters. That. I love those <laughs> victory, victory over lack. Yeah. Victory Praise over God. Lack. And we do have we've got we've got testimonies that come to us. People talk to me about listening to the broadcast or listening to these broadcasts and how it's changing their lives. Praise God. You know, the, That's so o awesome. the only way to renew your mind to the word is that faith comes by hearing and yeah, hearing by the Word of God and applying the Word of God. Apply. And that's what we're doing here. So let me do this quickly, Gloria. I'll just kind of catch up on okay. where we've been these last couple of days. But as I shared uh, over the last few days, I received a word from Keith Moore who came to our church in 1999. And it got me going. It got me started on a path Praise God. that I've never quit since, and this is really what we're doing here is 15 years culmination of just learning, training, being taught about this. But uh, Brother Keith was at our church for a meeting and before he actually gave his message for the night, he had a word from the Lord for our church, a message for our church. And I'm sitting on the platform excited about this message from the Lord for our church and it said, God's heart is grieved. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> it was bothering God that we were not reaping. Yeah. He said, some are disillusioned and aggravated with God. How much more can I give? You think you're waiting on God. You think that reaping is automatic. You think that once you put the money in, it's all up to him. You just sit back and think that it's going to come, just come to you. That's ignorance and confusion. Those are strong words. Yeah. Ignorance. Confusion. They go together a lot. Yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> but he said, I challenge you to hear the word of the Lord and make up your mind and say, I'm not just a good giver. I'm a good reaper. Amen. I'm getting yes, really amen. good at reaping. So Gloria, we found out, or at least I, I found out that where increase is concerned, the reaping part has been the missing link. I believe that. We've been taught to give. We've been taught to sow but we really haven't been taught a lot about reaping the harvest. So we are becoming much better reapers because of that. We found out that we were created by God to reap. As you said, we have the, the harvesting gene. Yes, that's right. We have a DNA. I mean, it's, it's built in on the inside of us. We are, we are harvesters. That's what God has called us to do. Right. We learned about the rules of reaping, that reaping is not automatic. Reaping is our responsibility and we have to reap by faith, reap by the words of faith that we speak, that we do not get um, discouraged or we don't quit or give up, that we will reap harvest mm -hmm. if we do not give up and quit. Amen. And I like these. These are a couple of quotes. This one is from Brother Copeland. If you haven't thought of yourself as a harvester, start thinking of yourself that That's way. That's good. I am. I am a harvester. I'm a harvester. Amen. I'm a harvester. Glory to God. And Gloria Amen. Copeland said this mm -hmm. just in the last couple of days. Reaping is not seasonal. It's continual. That's right. That's what we do. It's not limited to one, one bumper crop no. <laughs> for the year. 
Have you ever done that before? I mean, I, I've done that and the Lord has corrected me on it where Terry and I might have gotten a big something come in to the household. And the temptation for people is to think, okay, that's it for the year. No. But no, no. As I've shared with you every morning when we get up, we preach to each other and this is exactly what we say. I am expecting my greatest yes, blessing I ever like today because great grace is upon us all. Amen. So I'm expecting that. I'm expecting our greatest harvest yes, ever today. And I say that even before we turn the light on. That's good. I Lord. mean, it just comes. I like that. It comes out of the darkness. I'm going to do that And myself. it brings the light. And those first words are so important. Mm -hmm. They're first so words. important. First words. There is the law of first mention. The law of first mention. And you know, here's something else I'll throw in here that Terry and I do. When we, when we pray over our meals together, uh, we, just don't, we just don't say, thank you, Lord, for the food, amen. I mean, we have, we have sessions of Praise prayer. God. We have, sometimes we have to reheat the food, <laughs> but we have sessions where we are calling in the harvest, taking hold what belongs to us, what is ours. Amen. You said that any time is sowing time. Any time is sowing time. That's right. If you want to taste it, you have to harvest it. If you want to taste the good fruit, then you have to harvest the good fruit. You have to plant. And then you said you have you have to pick it, pack it, and ship it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's right. So those are some of the things that we've talked about over the last couple of days. And today Let's talk about, Gloria, the connection between tithing and reaping. There's a connection there. Praise God, I want to hear that. There's a very serious connection between tithing and reaping. And uh, I, one time, not too long ago, I was preparing to do offering in the church and the Lord gave me these three words, the tithing effect. That's good, I like the that. The tithing effect. The effect that tithing has on everything, including what you sow and how you reap. Mm -hmm. So Gloria, I want us to look at that. A successful harvester tithes. That's the main point That's of right. what we're bringing out here is that it's going to be very difficult to harvest it's if true. nothing is going in. Tithing is the bottom line to harvest. It really is. Because you, it really is. when you tithe, you bring God in on your deal. Yes. This is true. <laughs> I'm looking for my pen. And he can do such a much better job than you can do by yourself. I'm Glory writing. to God. You bring God in on your deal. Whatever it is. And he, whatever it is, and he can do a much better job. That's true. It really is. I've heard others preach about this. It's the covenant connection. That's Tithing right. is the covenant That's right. connection. And if you aren't tithing this broadcast today, you, mean, you need to make a determination. Oh. The tithe is the 10% yes. that belongs to God. And what he does with that 10% is he reinvests it for our well, benefit. You know, it's 10% of your gross income. And you might say, well, my income is gross enough as it is, but that's the reason you got to get right. God in on your <laughs> deal. Glory to God. We okay. never increased to any degree until we became faithful tithers. Terry and I have been doing that ever since we, together as a husband and wife, ever since we got married. Have you lacked for anything? We have not lacked. Amen. We have, have not it. lacked for anything. And our giving continues to increase. I am, I am so thankful that we are tithers. Even in the, mm -hmm. the thin times, we still tithe. This ministry tithes. That's 10% right. right off of the top of the income of Kenneth Copeland Ministries uh, is, is tithed. And it's in excess now of what, $50 million that has been Praise tithed God. from this ministry. There's a confidence, Gloria, that comes when you know you're a tither. There really is a confidence that, that, you, can, that you can stand before the devil and say, I come against you in the name of a tither. If you tithe in faith. If you tithe in faith and you believe God. Yeah, you've got to release your faith. And it, it produces the windows. Believe the word. Opening, the windows of heaven opening before you, pouring out a blessing. But let's look at a couple of scriptures concerning this, because I believe this is important. This is one of the points that Brother Keith brings out in his teaching 
called, <clears throat> called The Rules of Reaping, one of the things he talks about in there is why, why people don't harvest and why they don't harvest a big harvest. And one of the reasons mm. is that they don't tithe. They don't tithe. Yeah. And so let's look at this scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Mm -hmm. So shall your barns yeah. be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. Praise God. The new King James, honor the Lord with your possessions with the first fruits of all your increase. Your barns will be filled with plenty. Your vats will be overflowing. Praise God. And notice it says here, barns. Your barns, barns will be uh, filled. Barns. Uh, yeah, that's Keith. Barns. Uh, your barns uh, will be filled with plenty. But think about the word barn in relationship to the harvest. Okay. Think that's, about where, that's where the fruit of the harvest goes. It goes into the barn. And a couple of things about tithing. Tithing is not sowing. Tithing is returning to the Lord what is His, That's what true. rightfully belongs to Him. Mm -hmm. It's the returning of the Lord, the first fruits of your increase. The tithe belongs to God. That's right. Sometimes, Gloria, <clears throat> and, and one of the things that we've done, Terry and I, is that we, we took a cue from you and Kenneth about how you handle your tithe. And we've, we have spent more time together praying over our tithe. What we used to do is we would take it to church and then it would be part of the worship time that we have there. But we, we take time to pray over that tithe in the same way that you and Kenneth mm -hmm. do. And we don't do an automatic deduction because we, as a, as a discipline, we have That's to right. pray yeah. over that tithe Release together. Your faith. Yeah. So there'll be times in the morning, Sunday morning, sometimes we'll take that time before we go to church, we'll take about 15, 20 minutes or so, maybe a half an hour, and we'll pray over that tithe. And there have been times when we're driving to church, I'll pull that envelope out and I'll hold it up. And I'll say, Lord, we are taking the hallowed things away from our house. Yeah, amen. And we are That's bringing good. them to you. Literally, bringing them to you. The devoted things. The devoted time. things, yeah. the separated things, the separate things away. We're driving away from our house and Lord, we're taking this with us. And we would not even think about not tithing. No. That is not, that's never a consideration in our household. No. Why? Because we want our barns full. Because we remember when we didn't tithe. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Our barns right. were not full. Our barns were not full. They were not full. We need God in on our blessing, on our money, on our everything, our increase. And the Glory act of tithing is an honor to God. Yes, that's what it is. That's why we do that in church. That why, that's why, we, that's why we have offering times, is to take that time and to honor God with our tithes and our offerings. And we lift it before Him and we worship Him with it. And Jesus is the high priest of the tithe. And he takes that tithe, he turns to the Father, and he worships the Father with our giving. It's important. Amen. It's important. And it's important for the success of our harvest. That's right. Now that's the connection, the tithe connection, the tithe effect on our harvest. I'll read another scripture here. Leviticus 27:30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons that people don't reap is because they don't tithe. That covenant connection is not there. So you're, you're keeping what is the Lord's. You're holding on to what is the Lord's. You're holding on to what belongs to And you're stopping him. the blessing yes. from operating. How can... How can, if we hold back on the tithe, how can the windows of heaven open and be poured out on us? And I'm going to show you right now um, the things that I've learned from Keith and the things that I've learned from you all and the things that the Lord has showed me about the tithe. Tithing protects the harvest. Praise God. Really, tithing is, a, is an insurance policy. 
in the protection of our harvest. Well, the you, tithing is the open door to the blessing. Yes. And it's the blessing that God said forth that's going to meet your needs, give you what you need, bless you, keep you well, keep you prosperous. And so our tithing opens that door for God to move supernaturally. You know, He doesn't just come in and knock you over in your life. You have to open the door. You didn't get saved as soon as you That's could right. have That's or right. I could have because I didn't open the door before it. I right. didn't know to open the door, but still that door to him was not open. I didn't receive him. Well, tithing keeps the door open when you do it in faith. Now That's you can so tithe in That's unbelief so and it it's not the same, but you tithe in faith. You worship God with your tithe. Ken and I pray over our tithe. We worship mm -hmm. God with it. Mm -hmm. We believe God. Mm -hmm. And we sow it to the kingdom of God. It really and is. We're blessed. It really is for our benefit. Mm -hmm. Tithing is for That's our right. benefit. Yeah. And tithing is also for the benefit of our harvest. It right. protects the harvest. Let me show you. Let's turn okay. over to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi 3. And we're going to look at this key to the protection of our harvest and the connection of our harvest here. It says, in Malachi chapter 3, in verse 9, we'll start, we'll start here in verse 9. You've cursed, you're cursed with a curse. Well, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Not Yet, this man. Not this man, <laughs> but you've robbed me. But you say, wherein have you robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Well, let me make a statement about that right there. That, that statement, will a man rob God? And this is one day I was, I was studying for a an offering at church and the Lord ministered to me and he was saying it to me like this, George, will you rob me of my desire oh God. to bless you? Oh, that's good. Don't, will you rob me of your desire? Don't take that away from me. Mm -hmm. Don't like keep that. that from me. Don't, don't rob from me the opportunity to increase you and enlarge you and get you to the next level and get you to the next place. It really is the voice of the Father's love coming to me, speaking yeah. that to me. But it says here in verse 10, bring all the tithes, or the Amplified Bible says, the whole 10% of your income into the storehouse, that there may be meat, food, nourishment in my house. Prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. You know that word open. I'm trying to open my Bible because I've written here on the yeah. side. But the word open there in the Hebrew means to cut, cut loose and throw open, throw open cut open. loose. That's what open means. Praise God. That's what he wants to do. Throw That's the open. result of the time. The windows of mm. heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I know, here we go. Here we go. This is the connection right. to the harvest. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Praise God. Now the devourer in the Hebrew means seed eaters and crop destroying pests. Wow. Did you ever read the margin of uh, verse 10 What's where it say? says, pour you out a blessing? Uh, it says, uh, empty out. Empty. Ooh, empty that's, ooh, that's out. Good. A empty blessing. Empty out. Empty that out. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. Wow. Isn't that good? That's, empty that's out. That's so good. Hallelujah. Praise God. That, little, that fine print's good there. What he does is he opens the window, windows of heaven, sends the rain on the seed that we have sown. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I'll rebuke the devourer, the seed eaters, the crop destroying pests for your sake. He shall not seed destroy eaters. seed eaters. Listen to that. that. Now you can go somewhere with that. Seed eaters. Seed eaters. How about interest? Because you have to borrow money. Oh, glorious. That's a seed, seed eater. eater. Oh my goodness. Yes. My, my, yes, my. yes, yes, yes. He will not destroy or corrupt or spoil or ruin the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Christ. I like this one in the new NIV. It says, I will prevent pests from destroying your crops and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit. And it says in the New Living Translation, your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and disease. Yeah. Your grapes yeah. will not fall from the vine before they are ri ripe, says the Lord of the heaven's armies. God. So basically what's being said here, Gloria, is 
that there's a protection over the harvest and it's the tithe. It's the tithe. Mm -hmm. The blessing. It's the is blessing. The protection and the blessing is released because of the tithe. If you look on your next page there, Lori, there's a page that I included in the notes. It's a handwritten page. Yeah. And we don't have time to go through it. You can go online and get these. But look down there towards the bottom at the New Living mm -hmm. Translation. These yeah. are all translations awesome. and studies that I've done on the tithe. But it says, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out mm. a blessing. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. Try it. Praise Let God. me prove it to you. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them against insects and disease. Praise Your grapes Lord. will not shrivel before they ripe. All the nations will call you blessed uh, and will call you blessed for your land shall be such a delight and we will surely shout, we can't, we can't hold anymore. Praise That's God. the harvest. That's awesome. I like That's that. That's the harvest. Praise, Praise God. Praise God. Thank How much time Jesus. do we have here? One minute. I can do this. <laughs> a farmer's experiment in tithing. Perry Hayden heard his pastor preach a message about tithing he decided to try an experiment to see how much harvest a seed would produce. His plan was to sow one cubic inch of wheat, 360 kernels. He committed to the Lord that for a period of six weeks, he would tithe 10%. Six years. Period of six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. Tithe 10% of the harvest and sow the rest. In the first year, it took a four by eight plot of land to sow one cubic inch of seed. At harvest time, he scraped the ground in order to get every kernel of wheat Every precious seed counted. The first year produced a 50-fold harvest. Glory. He tithed 10%. In the second year, it took a 24-foot by 60-foot plot of land to sow the seed from the harvest of the first year. He tithed 10%. The third year, it took three quarters of an acre to sow. He tithed 10%. In the fourth year, it took 14 acres to sow. He tithed 10%. In the fifth wow. year, it took 230 Ooh. acres to sow. He tithed 10%. Awesome. In the, fifth, in, the, in the sixth year, by the sixth year, it took over 2,600 acres to sow 5,000 bushels. 360 kernels had turned into 55 billion, and the largest yield was only 50-fold. Perry Hayden made $288,000 in six years compared to the other farmers who only made an average of $21,000. That's awesome. The experiment worked. God can bless your harvest. Glory to God. Tithe. That's marvelous. Hallelujah. George and I'll be right back. It's always good for a believer to sow time, energy, and resources. That's how we make the kingdom of God grow. When the harvest is ready, it's your right to reap. Unfortunately, misinformation, misunderstanding, and mistakes cause lots of believers to miss their opportunity to collect the benefits that are rightly theirs. The How to Reap Your Harvest package with Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons was created to help you grab hold of your harvest. The package features the How to Reap Your Harvest BVOV broadcast, companion study notes booklet, and Kenneth Copeland's book, Blessed to Be a Blessing, a road-tested how-to guide that defines your role to receive the blessing. Combined, these resources provide the insights you need to help bring in your harvest. Learn the rules of reaping. God created mankind to be harvesters. The How to Reap Your Harvest package helps you understand exactly how to realize that reality in your life today. Learn the rules of reaping. Order the How to Reap Your Harvest package for the special price of $29.99. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call toll free 800-600-7395. Set your heart and soul on the goal of reaping your harvest. Discover the missing link between your sowing and your reaping. Order your package today. For an additional 10% off, order your package online. We've got something good for you today. How to reap your harvest package. Hallelujah. Praise God, Tell Gloria. us about it, George. Again, I'm so excited about this because we're taking all of the notes plus other materials that we're adding to the outlines that are available and then the DVDs Praise or God. the CDs wow. of the teachings that we've done. 
and the folks can add, we can add to that also blessed to be a blessing by brother copeland praise god this will help you renew your mind as to who you are as not only a sower but a reaper as yeah. well a harvester and to get that harvest mentality it's like i was reading an article uh, by brother copeland not too long ago that he was talking about having a talk with Oral Roberts, and Oral Roberts said to him, Kenneth, you gotta get, you've got to get harvest on your mind. That's right. You've got to get the harvest on That's your mind. That's good, isn't it? And this is a way to get the harvest Praise on your God. mind. How awesome. to reap your harvest. How to reap your harvest. Glory Praise to God. Praise God. Get your package today. Go to kcm.org. Father George and I pray you, for Jesus. every person listening Praise right now. You within the sound of our voice. We Thank believe you. with you listening that you are blessed and you have abundance, yes, you yes, prosper yes. and you have abundance in the name of the Lord Thank Jesus you. Christ. Be blessed in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise if you need prayer, call our 24-hour prayer line. Somebody will pray with you about your finances, about your body, your family, whatever you need. We have trained prayer ministers on staff and they will help you. There's power in God's Word. Amen. Believe you receive Amen. when you pray. Take His Word by faith and receive your answers. George and I'll see you again tomorrow. And remember, Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Build your faith and be transformed by the Word of God. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Continue your studies with this week's product offer. Order your copy today and let these word-based teachings help you live in victory. Receive God's grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing. This is your year of victory. Come to the Southwest Believers Convention June 30th through July 5th at the Fort Worth Convention Center in downtown Fort Worth, Texas. Join Kenneth and Gloria Copeland along with Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis, Creflo Dollar, Keith Moore, and Bill Winston for a week-long conference that will change your life. Receive God's Word, His wisdom, and His plan to live a strong, healthy, blessed life. Bring your family and friends. There'll be live Spanish interpretation, pre-service prayer with Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, exciting youth services for teens, and Super Kid Academy for children. Come to a special partner meeting with Kenneth Copeland Friday morning. Then join Gloria Copeland for a powerful healing service on Saturday morning. Celebrate the 4th of July with us as we honor God for His goodness and celebrate our nation's birthday. It's all free June 30th through July 5th at the Southwest Believers Convention. For more information, go to kcm.org southwest.